Welcome back. This is part two of tutorial 22. Um, we have so far shown how we can achieve passwordless login securely over SSH with SSH Key Exchange. Now we did it manually just so that you could see all of the steps if you've never done it before. If you have done it before then you probably skipped part one and you've dived into part two because now what we're going to do is we're going to make it really more useful that every time I create a software machine it will run a post install script for me and that post install script will run all of the steps that we have just covered so that I know then I can just SSH the IP address as the sysadmin user and it'll just log me in to my new machine. And that will happen time and time again for every new machine I create. So, how do we do that? Well, we need to create our little shell script first. So, I've started on a script called sltestscript.sh. I've done my shebang, so we're ready to go. So if you remember in part one, what did we do? Well, we did a user add of sysadmin. That's fine. Then we added a password for sysadmin. And to do this in our shell script, we can feed it the next two lines because it always asks us to verify the password. So let's make the password sysadmin and sysadmin. And then end your here document as they call it. What did we do then? Well then we made a directory called, we've done the user add so there is already a home sysadmin. We want to add a directory ssh. Once that directory is in there we then want to echo our key. Where is our key? Well let's grab our key. Here is our key. We want to grab the key, copy that, and we want to whack it in here. There's our key. And we want to put that into a new file, or etc, sorry, home, sysadmin, in the .ssh directory we just created, and we're calling that authorized keys. Perfect. Once we've done that, we now need to do all of the chowning and chamodic. So we want to change the owner to sysadmin of home sysadmin dot ssh. We also want to change the ownership to sysadmin of home sys sysadmin dot ssh authorized keys. Then we want to do the permissions. Remember it was 700 for home sysadmin dot ssh and it was 400 for home slash sysadmin. I can hear people screaming at their screen. You haven't done that right because I'm missing a slash in the above line, authorized hosts. I'll just go up and fix that now. Lovely. So we've done our chowning and our chamodic. So we're happy with that. What did we do next? Well, we dived into the sudoers file and we manually added a line underneath the root line. Now it doesn't need to go there because the whole config file is going to be read in. So for the purposes of sheer ease, rather than finding a particular line in the file and then inserting, we can just echo it to the bottom of the file, which is much easier. Tab, we're going all equals all tab no password colon, all. And we're going to append that to the etc sudoers file. So now we've taken care of sudoing. So it remains to actually make sure nobody can password log in 
using SSH. We can destroy the ability to do that. So, to do that, we need to remove the line in the SSHD config that says password authentication, yes. Now, how do we get rid of that? Well, what we want to do is, there's many ways of doing it, but I, I'm going to use sed. So, sed slash, what are we going to search for? Password authentication, yes. That's what we're going to search for, and we're going to delete it. We're going to delete that from the etc ssh sshd underscore config file and that'll print it out to the screen but we want to redirect that to tump sshd underscore config so we're saving the output of that said to a new file called sshd config that's fine that'll do that one so we now have an sshd config in the slash temp area without password authentication, yes. But for absolute surety, we want to echo password authentication, no, and append that to that file, slash tum, slash sshd underscore config. Excellent. Now we want to move our new slash tum slash sshd underscore config to override our etc ssh sshd underscore config. Perfect. We want to make sure the permissions are correct on that file. So we want to chmod 400, which is the standard for this particular file. That's it. And then the final thing we did was service sshd restart. So there's our little script. It's that simple. It's what, 20 lines? If we crammed it all together, it would be, you know, maybe 16 lines. But that is basically what we did in a script, what we did manually in a script. So I'm going to save that as our bash script. So if I do more sl minus test, lovely. So the next thing to do is we're going to have to make sure that this script is grabbed by software and we need to tell software it's a post install script. Join me in a second, we'll cover that one. Welcome back. Second last part, we're gonna test it obviously after this. To do a post install, we have our script as you can see here, we've just created that and that's fine. Um, but now we need to make this script available to software and for software to be able to see this script when it's running its install. Now we're going to tell software in a minute where it's going to find it, but where is it going to find it? Well, it needs to be on a web server that's serving it up over HTTPS. It must be S to be executable. If it's not S, it will not be executable. So it needs to be over HTTPS. Now, what's the easy way to serve this up? Well, the easy way to serve this up is actually to add it to, for me, is actually to add it to Git and then to reference it from GitHub. So, I will do a git add sl test script. So, that's added it. I'll do a git commit minus m and my message will be adding test script okay and then we want to do a git um a git push minus u origin 
master for an update. Hopefully, that will pop up our file, and it has. Lovely. So when we go on to GitHub now, we should see a test script. And there's my GitHub page with the test script. And there it is. That's what we've written. So that is now available on the web. So how do we tell software that that exists? Well, if I move this to the side, if you go to Devices, Manage, you'll see a thing called Provisioning Scripts. So we'll go on to Provisioning Scripts, give that a second to go there, and you'll see if you've not done any before, no provisioning scripts whatsoever. Sorry, I'm just copying the URL. So we want to add one. Well, click Add, Name, Post Install 1, let's call it that. Now, where is it going to find it? Well, on GitHub, my content will be on the HTTPS raw github user content.com Eamon Killian software utility scripts master and then the name of the actual script so software test script is that what I called it software test script dot sh so there it is over here and it's in software utility scripts Eamon Killian Software Utility Scripts Master, so that's what you need to do to have it visible from software. So I'm going to add that. Perfect. So we now have our script. So what we need to do now is go back to Devices, and I'm going to get rid of our SSH test machine. I'm going to cancel that device. SSH test dot com cancel continue I acknowledge gone so in a couple of minutes that machine will be gone and then we're going to instance a new SSH test machine and we're going to tell it as part of the build this time to actually use we created the last time from the command line I'm going to use the portal this time to create the new machine and I'm going to show you where you pop in uh, your post install script so join me in a sec when that machine has all disappeared and we'll create a new machine. We need to order a machine. That one's just not dying quickly enough or going away. We'll, we'll just create one called SSH1. So we're going to order a device as normal, hourly. And that will bring up our checkbox here. Give that a second. Okay, once the PHP has fully rendered the page, there we go. Amsterdam 03, CentOS 7, down to the bottom, continue. That's going to come up with some details about me as it refreshes the page, so I'll just swing it over there for a second. Now, when it comes up to the bill summary, as you paginate down, you will see this area, provisioning script. We've saved one called post install. That's all you have to do. Then we want to give it a host name and a domain name. So we're going to call this um, post inst test let's just call it that post ins test software whoops if I could spell software.com and all I'm going to do is go down and accept and place the order so rather than show you all my billing information and having to redo this thing I'm going to tick I have read finalize my order
And that's going to go away, refresh the page, and confirm back to me that I have ordered a new machine. And there it is. It's telling me you've ordered a new machine. So, good. We have a new machine on its way. If we refresh this now, we should see a new machine called Post Inst starting to arrive. Oh, at least the other one's died. Which is good. And there's our new one. Post Inst Test. All things remaining equal, that will come back to us in a few minutes and we will be able to just SSH in. So it'll be right in the middle of provisioning this, give that a couple of minutes, it takes no more than about six to eight minutes and our new virtual machine will be there. Well, even though the machine, as you can see, isn't fully back yet, what I have noticed, so if I hover over here, it's on the configuring the monitoring agent, which does mean the machine's available. So we can actually log into this machine. So what I want to do is position myself on this screen here. Um, and we want to test out our theory that we can now, now that the machine is available, simply log in with sysadmin and the IP address in the knowledge that we have key exchange going on and nobody else is able to log on as a passworded user. Hopefully this will just bring us straight in, proofs in the pudding. Will the post install script have worked? Oh, it's a new host, so we've got to say yes. And we're in. We're in a sysadmin on post inst test. Can we SU? Indeed we can. So there we are. We're fully SUing. So let's exit out of that and exit out of that and do the final test, which is bring this back up and let's, let's uh, SSH in as root. Firmly denied. So there's our secured or hardened machine, if you want to call it that. But I prefer to look at this as a much more usable way where we can have many, many, many uh, CentOS. We could rewrite the script to have the right stuff and a case statement in based on the U name. And please feel free to, you know, Take the script I have, rip it apart on GitHub and add to the um, script so that we cover more operating systems. Indeed, you could add a Windows one as well or rewrite it to be a Windows post install script. But the process hopefully has shown you a lot in terms of how to start making software much more fluid and easy to use. So what have we covered? Well, we've covered passwordless login to a CentOS machine. We then created a script to do all of the steps to create passwordless login. And then we've added that script as a named post install script on software, added it to GitHub. And then every time we create a virtual machine or I create a virtual machine from now on, it will pick up the script from GitHub and enable passwordless logon fluidly straight from just creating the machine. To use it from the command line, um, you know, if you wanted to use the software CLI, you would, you know, do an SL, let me make this a bit bigger, uh, SL CLI VS, that will tell us we've got a create, minus minus help, whoops, I could get the command right, and you would use minus I and name the post install script, the URL to the post install script is what it means by text here. So you can do it from the command line, you can do it the way I've just shown you. It just makes it so much more easy to use um, the post install script to do the things you want it to, it to do before you then log on and use the machines. My name's Eamon Killian. I hope you're finding these videos useful little tidbits to get going using IBM software. Thank you very, very much. Tune in next time for Tutorial 23.